but here we go. Hi, I'm Terry Thompson, and this is It's About Writing. Today we have Tara K. Ross with us, and I'm so excited to talk to her. There's so many things we could explore together. But Tara, why don't you tell us about your new book right now? Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to chat with you, Terry. Um, so yes, my name's Tara. I am a debut young adult um, contemporary author. Um, my first book, Fade to White's Behind You. Um, it is, uh, just came out in May through Illuminate YA, which is um, a publisher connected with Lighthouse Publications of the Carolina and Iron Screen Media. Um, and it's a story that's really close to my heart because it deals with the interplay of mental health and faith in the life of one teen um, named Thea, who is dealing with a lot of anxiety and um, having to navigate some really big questions in her life as her world is sort of crashing down around her. Um, so it, again, it has a really soft spot for me because it shares a lot of the experiences I went through as a teenager, um, as well as a lot of the youth that I've worked with um, through ministry work, as well as volunteer work and uh, worked within high schools. Very exciting. And it sounds so interesting. I actually have not read it yet, but I have it. So I'm going to read it <laughs> soon. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so you have some really wonderful marketing out there too, a website and a marketing kit. Is that inside the website? Are they both together or? Yeah. So within my website, there is a sort of all about me kind of page, but then I also have what they call a press kit. Mm -hmm. um, so information that is easily available to anyone who might want to uh, partner with me around interviews such as this or to blog. Um, or who is just looking for more information um, from behind the scenes point of view around um, creating a book and um, what kind of goes into that. Okay, that, that's really interesting. And how did you come up with your marketing strategy? <sighs> Lots of trial and error, <laughs> yeah. Lots of learning. We were chatting um, just before we came on about how um, as a first time author, there are so many things that you need to learn yesterday and you only know that you need to do them when somebody asks you why you don't have it already. And so <laughs> I had a very fast learning curve um, when it came to um, book marketing and um, actually being someone to represent your book beyond just your publisher representing it for you. Um, and I think this is valuable information that um, I gathered that anyone would sort of benefit from, whether you are independently publishing or whether you're going through um, a small publisher or even a larger publisher. Um, one of the first things I did was um, I did attend writers conferences, which I highly suggest for everyone. Virtually right now is such an amazing opportunity because there's right. conferences I would never have been able to attend from a cost and distance point of view because I'm up in Canada yeah. um, that I've been able to attend now for significantly less and on my own time frame. So um, this is the year to do that. <laughs> One good thing about 2020. <laughs> yes. There's, there's a few good things I will say there's a few good things that I've sort of pulled from it um, which I'll get to but um, yeah so I when I first started um, sort of exploring publication I did that um, I connected with some amazing podcasters both through the conferences and through recommendations through the conferences um, so Ann Croker was one of the people I met at one of my first conferences which was at Breathe um, writing conference in Michigan Okay. And um, she offered information to me about how to start a podcast. And so that was a really interesting thing because I love audiobook narrating. I love um, sort of expressing myself sort of through words. That's my day job. I'm a speech language pathologist. And so the idea of hosting a podcast um, just seemed like a fantastic opportunity. And so she kind of gave me the um, groundwork for how I could go about doing that. So that was a really great idea that I didn't even think about as being marketing at the time. I just wanted an opportunity to sort of get to know other authors um, and share about amazing um, young adult books because I felt like I was having a hard time finding them and wouldn't it be great if other people could find them too. So that was one sort of um, in and around about way that I learned um, was great so for, sort of for building um, recognition of who you are within sort of the book community. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I've met some amazing authors through that. Um, wow. Yeah, and through those sort of opportunities and connections with other authors, they have so graciously um, offered other sort of ideas and um, by joining up with their email newsletter lists, which I highly recommend people to do, you're able to sort of see how um, they're sharing about not only their book, but this amazing um, book community. And that's what I love so much about the writing community now is recognizing how supportive everyone is of each other. Um, and that would be sort of one of my biggest um, things that I would say around marketing is um, it's so much better to not market your own book so much as it is to market other people's. Um, because then you're able to share about a wealth of fabulous prose that goes beyond just your own words. Um, and then those authors in return are, are very grateful and they see that you're somebody starting out and that they're willing to sort of come alongside you and help you out as well. Um, so that has been amazing for me. So that's um, the subject of your podcast. It's like exploring other YA books and just, okay. Yeah, so I, I, should, I, should, I should say it's the Hope Pros podcast. So it's an author interview style post podcast that I co-host with Rebecca Black. Um, and so we have on every dream author that I've ever read within Christian young adult fiction, we've had the chance to interview. There's a few that I'm still hoping to, um, but it has been this amazing opportunity to learn not only about marketing, that's a very small part of what we usually talk about, um, but to learn how people approach writing, um, what themes they like to explore, um, what aspects of the craft are more interesting and more challenging um, for them. Um, and then again, we are able to sort of talk a little bit about what is trending within the industry. Um, and then that gives us more opportunity to say, okay, if this is what's sort of happening in a marketing sense, how can we work together to sort of help each other out? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's been super duper helpful. So I'm just connecting all things. I, I know I saw your book earlier in the year and I actually went to your website and I I listened to three or four of those. So I didn't connect until you said Hope Pros. And I was like, oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's good. I got some good information. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then the other thing that I would say, um, some of the podcasts that I've listened to that I highly recommend for authors, um, Novel Marketing um, with Thomas Umstead Jr. He oh. does a fantastic job of giving you really digestible marketing gems that you can sort of take away and apply. And he has, oh, I want to say like hundreds of episodes at this point. And you can scroll through and find the ones that work best for you. Um, and that's kind of what I did when I first started because a lot of his marketing was way beyond where I was able to sort of work at that point in my writing life. Mm -hmm. um, but for instance, things like how do you create an author website? Um, he had a great podcast about that. Um, I, if Thomas ever listens to this, I apologize. I went against most of what he told me to do because I went with a Wix website and he's so pro WordPress, oh, <laughs> but, yeah. um, but I learned about key aspects that you want. And one of his episodes was about having, um, a press kit, um, within your website so that oh, it's easy okay. for people to be able to access information about you. Um, the idea of having a lead magnet, something you're giving away for free that helps connect um, potential readers to your writing style. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot of that from him as well. Yeah, so that's another one that's been great. Um, he also um, hosts the Christian Publishing Show, which is through the Steve Lobby Agency, I think, sponsored that. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then the Steve Lobby Agency in itself, um, they have an amazing blog um, that I've been able to pull a lot from as well as my own agency, um, Kyle Young has serious writers and I've learned a ton through them also. So yeah, lots I of different places too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so much. So how much time do you, would you say you spend on marketing now that your book is out? How about how much time in your week do you give to marketing? Um, it ebbs and flows really. Um, I, tended to, I'm somebody who likes to plan. So when I had a pause, like for right now, if I'm in a waiting period, because I'm on submission for my next novel, um, 
I have a bit of more uh, flexibility over how much time I can sort of commit to marketing. Mm -hmm. um, so right now I just went through um, kind of a giveaway. I partnered with other authors around a larger giveaway um, as well as doing sort of a sort of a review opportunity. And that required a little bit more time as well as things like interviews um, and blog posts. Mm -hmm. So I would say coming up to my release, um, and then the months that followed was significantly higher. Like I want to say between five and 10 hours a week um, for that period of time when I really had to sort of um, organize my time and my thoughts and um, do a lot more blog posts and um, podcast interviews and that kind of thing, um, which was really helpful to get the word out. And I think that, um, a lot of sort of marketing gurus within um, book publishing would recommend the same thing that you be prepared for this sort of need to increase your time and availability leading up to a release. Mm -hmm. um, while I'm writing, um, that goes down significantly. So I would say when I was doing the editing phase um, with Dave White, um, it would be more like a couple hours a week. Um, and then again, now that I'm trying to, I'm on submission and um, I'm sort of winding down my book launch efforts. Um, I'm finding more time to get back into writing a third novel mm -hmm. and my marketing efforts are gonna slowly, I find probably decrease until I have sort of little spurts of, it's six months, it's a year, and I wanna sort of um, re um, place myself within the sort of sea of books and yes. <laughs> rise from being sort of buried within the ocean. Yeah. Some of the analogies they use. Well, it's kind of freeing to think about that you don't, it's not always part of your week for yeah. all the year long, even when you're writing, that it can kind of ebb and flow like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I would, I would say that, um, something that I have been sort of cautioned around and something that I, I see as really important as a new author or as somebody who's trying to get into um, the, the publishing industry, um, you do want to be consistent, even if it is small. Um, so for instance, I always make sure that I'm writing a monthly newsletter. Mm -hmm. So I do that. Some people do it weekly. Um, I prefer monthly for me. I think that's probably a good a balance. Mm -hmm. um, but I include quite a bit within that. And then I'm also putting out a podcast every two weeks. I see. So those are things that are consistently happening throughout the year, um, mm -hmm. aside from other marketing efforts. And, yeah. and those are things I love. Um, that would be something else I would caution people. If you don't love social media, don't be spending hours on it every week trying to build a platform there if it doesn't feel like it's um, resonating with you in a way that actually comes across as authentic. Um, if you don't love writing blog posts <laughs> and that's not your sort of your skill set and your love and your passion, then that might not be something that you invest as much time in and is seeking out bloggers and those book blogger review type things. Um, I was finding for myself, I was getting drained from that because I found the questions were very familiar in some ways, whereas things like this, I will do them anytime because I love conversations. I love face-to-face. -face, um, I love um, sort of verbal interactions. So that's my strength. And those are things that, um, again, if it wasn't for COVID, I would have been doing more speaking as well because I love yeah. experiences. I love, you know, just chatting with people in um, sort of a learning environment too. So yeah. I think that's one thing that you will find um, when you start to create a marketing plan. Um, and my publisher was really great with giving me sort of an outline of ideas and where I should sort of focus myself. They really stress that you want to find um, a few areas that make sense for your market. So for us, young adult fiction, um, where can I actually find readers mm -hmm. and connect with them? Um, and then how can I provide um, something that's actually going to be helpful or interesting for them? Um, and that's going to be different for someone who writes romance for adults versus someone who writes um, science fiction um, and you mm -hmm. sort of need to learn where your readership is um, and be willing to take some risks within those bubbles because um, I don't like social media for instance it's not yeah. something that I did at all practically before um, deciding that I wanted to write to publish um, 
but I sort of said, okay, if I'm going to do one of these, I will choose one that sort of offers some appeal to me. And that was Instagram because it was pretty. <laughs> I like posting pretty pictures of things because I like photography. Um, but that's something I do on the side. It's not like my primary mm -hmm. marketing effort, whereas it is for other authors. Right. Uh, other authors that might be their primary way of connecting with their readers. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very informative. I hope that you will come back again and talk to us some more about characterization. I know you were talking about that. Um, do you want to just give a, like a little tip or do you have any? Yeah. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to. Um, yeah, so I just, I spoke twice in the last couple of months virtually on character development. Um, it's something that I love doing as part of my sort of initial brainstorming and drafting mm -hmm. phase is getting to know my characters in a way that is deeply personal. Um, so the um, workshops that I gave was looking at character development in sort of a triple layer. And I use chocolate because I love chocolate. Um, so <laughs> the, three, the three areas that I focused on was um, the, this, the nutty core of your character. Um, mm -hmm. That being looking at um, their arc the character arc that they're going to have and understanding that characters can have you know the traditional positive arc but then you also have some that are going to be more of a flat arc um and then if you have your your villains um <laughs> you're going to have that sort of down sloping arc um and understanding how um the, the core questions that surround that are going to help form their journey in the story um and i really do think that if you understand your character in a really deep way then uh, the flow of the story comes out of those um, deeper needs and wants mm -hmm. that you can start to recognize through that. Um, then the sort of second layer that I looked at was looking at sort of the, the gooey essentials of your character. <laughs> um, and then within that, talking about um, what are some of the really important questions that we can be asking our characters to help us get to know them in a better way. Um, one of the things I, I really like to look at is um, their wounds or their fatal flaws, um, trying to get a sense of their backstory a little bit. None of this might come into the actual writing. I might never actually tell people what's happening in the 10 years prior to them being on the page, um, but I need to know it because then it drives um, who they've become in the moments of our story. So right. if I'm looking now at um, what kind of personality they have, their personality strengths, their positive traits, and um, their negative traits are going to have likely be formed through those experiences that happened to them in the past. And so it offers me a lot more credibility for why they would do something in my story if I can explain it based on what they've been through prior mm -hmm. to the story starting. So that's kind of the gooey essentials is, is fleshing out sort of those character traits um, and uh, looking a little bit more at um, like reactions to things and sort of those pieces. Mm -hmm. And then finally I get to the outer shell and this is more of the like aesthetic aspects of my characters. Yeah. Um, and within this piece I'm, I'm really starting to look for unique attributes around either their, or their physical features that would make them stand out. Maybe if they're ancillary characters I just need one or two things that sort of pin them in someone's mind. Mm -hmm. um, or I'm looking at really unique sort of quirks and um, hobbies and things that make sense now that I have a an understanding of their personality and what would drive them towards different things. Yeah. Um, oh, address it. Yeah. Um, I believe, <laughs> because I virtually recorded all these, um, I believe I said that I would be um, putting out a character profile summary sheet in my next newsletter. So if people are interested in sort of having a, a one page, um, it's actually, oh, oh, that's not it. Um, <laughs> I have other things that I've made that I use for writing, but this is just sort of a quick character profile. Um, I can show a quick example because I have it from the story I'm working on right now um, that basically allows me to um, put all those critical pieces that I've talked about on one quick page of a reference point. And I do it in pencil, just like this. Oh, yeah, that's great. Um, and so it gives me a visual. Um, and as I'm writing, I actually add to it. So I don't know, um, like I have things like your story goal, your motivations, your personality, things you love, things you hate, um, reactions, 
and so on. And um, as I find out more about my character, I sort of add to it. So I make sure I have consistency as the story goes along. Um, so not all of it's there when I start, but I try to get a good sense of who they might be. Mm -hmm. And then as the story unfolds, um, those little details, I can sort of write down and have it in one, one place. So yeah. yeah, I'll put that up. I think I'm, I'm <laughs> I have to organize myself better, but I think I have a newsletter coming out at the end of October. Um, and I will be uh, including that quick reference character profile within that in newsletter because I think I said I was going to do that within those conferences. Okay. And so we could just <laughs> sign up on your website. Yep. I already get your newsletter, so I'll be glad. So to you'll get it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, that'll be in there. Um, and uh, yeah, that's sort of a quick, quick summary. Um, some okay. of the resources that I was just, if you want, I know we're getting close on time, um, that I love is the... Um, and we have a number of resources that I love, including things like the emotional thesaurus, the negative trait thesaurus. Oh. Um, and then they have the emotional wound thesaurus, which is really helpful for me when I'm starting to create my characters because it gives me ideas of where I can, um, there we go, <laughs> yeah. um, of where I can sort of pull some of their backstory um, and flesh out again why they are the way they are mm -hmm. and why that would reflect in the kind of story I want to tell given whatever sort of themes that I'm thinking about. Right. Yeah, so those right. Are well, you just gave us so much information and um, yeah, if you could, if you want to email me like any links or just names sure. of those books and then I'll yeah. put it in there too um, or the ones that you already mentioned about the marketing and I will put your website and information for your book and everything so everyone you you won't have to take notes you can see it right in the description at the bottom <laughs> below the video well thank yes. you so much tara we I, I just appreciate it so much well thanks terry for chatting with me it was fun to chat both on recorded time and prior to <laughs> yeah, i enjoyed it too thank you